Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today's video is going to be bittersweet because it's the final project episode for the 89 S10 build. This has been a long time coming and if you've been following my channel for a while you know this truck has undergone several transformations over the last several years or so but now it's Finally, time to wrap everything up. There's a few big things that I want to cover in this video. First of all, the custom audio system, which has been totally finished. With timing and all that stuff, I wasn't able to film any more content on the rest of the fabrication and installation of all of the components. I just had the one for the subwoofer box. So I will be giving you guys an in-depth look at how all of that turned out. I want to give a big shout out to Boss Audio Systems for supporting that portion of the build. It turned out fantastic. The other couple things that I'll be doing is installing a set of coil overs on the front from Alden American, as well as installing a set of Rocket Racing Booster wheels, which Rocket Racing wheels are now available through Holly. So if anybody has any questions regarding any of the parts that I'll be using in this video, I've got a bunch of links down in the description box below so be sure to check that out also as always be sure to support the brands that support the channel it really means a lot as always there's a whole bunch of work to do so without further ado let's go ahead and get started for those of you who may have not heard of Alden American before, they've been developing high quality performance suspension upgrades and parts since 1981, including shock absorbers, coilovers, and suspension kits, all designed for racing, street performance, and vehicle specific applications. Their products are designed, tested, and made in the United States. I used one of their complete coilover conversion kits on my 85 Monte Carlo SS a while back and I couldn't be happier with the overall ride quality and handling improvements. For the S10, I used one of their coilover conversion kits up front that offers up to 2 inches of ride height adjustment in addition to adjustable valving so the firmness can be dialed in by the twist of a dial on the shock body. I'm keeping my lowering springs out back and adding shocks that'll complement the coilovers by offering adjustable valving as well. At the end of the day, I built this truck to be driven. Now the icing is on the cake. I will say also that Alden American's customer service is top notch. They're more than willing to answer questions or help you figure out what's best when it comes to your project's long-term goals. Whether you're a first-time builder or a professional racer, be sure to check out Alden American's vast product catalog the next time your suspension needs attention.
The wheels you saw on this truck at the beginning of the video were not the wheels I originally had on the truck. The originals were from an 80s Monte Carlo SS, measuring 15 by 7 inches, and they were wrapped in 22560 tires. I knew I was going to swap to an updated setup at some point, but I preemptively borrowed the Monte wheels to use in the Camaro IROC Z detailing video I uploaded a little while back. Therefore, I just threw on the Camaro's wheels so I still had the ability to move the truck around till I got around to doing all of this. Like I mentioned earlier, Holly Performance Products is the parent company of Rocket Racing Wheels, which includes over a dozen different alloy wheel styles that combine traditional hot rod styling cues with modern sizes and classic finishes. This style is known as the Booster. It has a classic five-spoke design that I'm a big fan of, and it's available in finishes ranging from chrome, gray, hyper silver, and hyper shot. I went with the Hyper Shot, which has more of a semi-gloss pearlescent gray look to it. The polished outside lips are a nice touch too. As far as sizes, I ended up going for 18 by 7 inches in the front, which have 4.5 inch back spacing, and 18 by 9 inches in the rear, which have 5.25 inch back spacing. They're wrapped in Falcon ZX all-season tires, 225-45s in the front and 255-40s in the rear. Overall, this is going to be a much better setup than what I had before as far as improving handling and traction out back. Alright everyone, it's time for an in-depth look at the audio system. This thing turned out so good. I've got plenty of sound clips coming up. Thankfully, my camera does a pretty decent job at picking everything up without getting you know, distorted and stuff. But if you really want to get a good idea of how things sound, I'd recommend listening to um, everything with like a good pair of headphones or something. Something that just has like good low-end response. Obviously, it's not going to come across camera as good as it would in person, but at least it might give you somewhat of an idea. But this truck originally came with four speakers from the factory. You had two in the dash and two in the back panels. Now, with everything included, there's 16 speakers in here. If you haven't seen the original video of building the subwoofer box, I've got the link to it down in the description below, and you guys can get a better idea of just how much equipment we ended up cramming in here. Uh, big shout out to my buddy Ben over at Extraordinary Audio in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He's the one that did all of the fabricating and whatnot. I, this, this is beyond my scope <laughs> at this moment. Uh, he's just amazing at designing stuff that integrates so well with the original panels and stuff to where it looks like it could have come that way from the factory. So very, very impressive. But anyway, the majority of the audio system is from Boss's Elite line, including the 6.5 inch component systems that are in the lower door panels. I've just got factory replacement speakers, you know, where the 4x10s and the 4x6s went. And of course, the 12 inch Elite Series subwoofers back there, four of them, basically eliminating any and all practicality in this truck. But boy, it sure does look cool. <laughs> Ben built the amp rack onto the front of the box so it's hidden behind the seat and he got a little creative at one point when I wasn't at, uh, at his shop and cut a Chevy logo into it so you can just barely see um, the four amplifiers that are powering the entire audio system back there so it is pretty cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and fire up the stereo and let you guys hear what it sounds like.
The tricky part with trying to install a double din radio in a first generation S10 is that the factory bezel was originally designed to accommodate a one and a half din radio. That being said, Ben designed a custom housing for this radio that combines part of the S10's original bezel and AC vents with a custom ABS plastic addition to basically center the radio, delete the cigarette lighter, and have a housing that looks like it could have come that way from the factory. This particular radio from Boss doesn't take up a whole lot of room behind it either, which made fitment far easier so it doesn't stick out too far from the dash and prevented the need for hacking up the ductwork on the dash. Plus, the ashtray beneath the radio is still fully functional. The radio is model number BVCP9850W. It's a mechless radio, meaning it doesn't have a built-in CD or DVD player. It does, however, offer the latest streaming technologies, including wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The high-resolution 6.75-inch touchscreen has capacitive touch, so it responds very similar to a smartphone. Plus, with a built-in microphone on the top left of the unit, you don't have to worry about running a corded microphone to use the hands-free phone system. The radio also offers USB, auxiliary, rear camera, and steering wheel control inputs. In addition to front, rear, and sub preamp outputs and 320 watts of max power. I've used Boss radios and a couple of other vehicles previously and really appreciate the value for content, especially with this one. It looks and operates more high-end than its price may suggest, so I highly recommend it if you're looking for an upgrade. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. The truck at this point is about 95% complete. There's nothing else that I need to film. Um, everything else is going to be done off camera, like paint touch-ups, reinstalling my visor, my bed cover, of course that fuel door that's still missing, and just all of the little nitpicky, fine detail type things that just come with wrapping up a build but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot thank you guys so much for supporting this series all this time i would have loved to get this thing wrapped up quicker but there's just been way too much going on but I'm pretty much here, and I cannot be happier. But anyway, I just got to film the last or the final in-depth review of this thing to, you know, summarize the entire build, but that'll be after all this little nitpicky stuff is finished. So I'll keep you guys up to date. Definitely follow me on my social platforms at sobkylo 4 llc to get updates on uh, the last bit of content on this truck. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because there's still a whole lot more content with other builds and car reviews to come. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.